Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is going to be another tropical update and United States weather update. Links uh, for uh, um, the timestamps, I mean, uh, those will be in the description. So you can just click on those and they will bring you to um, when I start tropical update and when I start the uh, United States portions of the videos. So um, I'm recording both videos for the government channel and this channel first, and I'm uploading the government video first. So if you guys want to see that, the link to that video will also be in the description because um, I'm posting that first. Anyway, let's get started. So we have the um, National Hurricane Center five-day graphical tropical outlook pulled up here. Also, guys, sorry for the long introduction a bit ago. But anyway, we have two areas of interest as well as Danielle and Earl. If we look at this uh, disturbance too, 30% chance of formation in the next five days. In the next 48 hours, the near 0% chance. Now, environmental conditions appear conducted for some gradual development, but then it's going to move west and westward over the eastern tropical Atlantic. Disturbance 1, 70% chance of formation over the next two days and five days. Um, and environmental conditions appear conducted for additional development of the system and a tropical depression is likely to form over the next couple days while it moves westward to west north westward 15 miles an hour over the central tropical Atlantic. And then um, upper level winds will become less conductive for development. Um, if we look at Danielle first, we do see a huge wind field, 80 miles an hour, and Portugal and Spain are now the cone, but that's going to really only be some proper depression. They could get some effects by Danielle, but not too, anything too bad. Wind speed probabilities, uh, they're in the 5 to 10% chance, but a huge area of 90 to 100% chance. If they were to get a tropical storm force winds, they would get it a late, very late Sunday, early Monday. Most likely. And this is supposed to weaken from now on and become post-tropical in about 24 hours. If we look at Earl, winter currently 90 miles an hour swells are, are affecting Bermuda a lot. Uh, pretty damaging swells. As well as some swells are making it to the east coast of the United States. But nothing too bad there. This is going to be moving north at 8 miles an hour at the moment. Uh, Bermuda is under tropical storm warning and a hurricane watch, and this is expected to become a major hurricane by 2 a.m. Friday. If we look at the discussion, we see this is supposed to get up to a Category 4 hurricane now. Yesterday was supposed to get to a low in Cat 3, now it's expected to become a Category 4 hurricane in two days, which is just absolutely insane. Um... Now, of course, this is horrible, but this is going to mean higher effects, especially in wind, because for me, it's not going to get a lot of rain from this system. Now, this tropics part is much longer than the United States part because there's much bigger things and much more important things in the tropics right now. Um, but still, United States stuff there is important, and that and that will be later in the video. But if we go back and we go to... Um, the key mess, uh, let's go to the arrival time winds. Most likely, uh, we see huge areas of 90 to 100% chance of tropical storm force winds. Bermuda is in the 70 to 80% chance. If they most likely to get um, their tropical storm force winds starting around Thursday 2 p.m. to Thursday 8 p.m. Uh, if we look at the hurricane wind speed probabilities, they are in the 5% chance, but still some possibility for hurricane force wind. Number one, although Earl Center is forecast to pass southeast of Bermuda, the wind field is expected to grow with tropical storm force winds forecast to spread across the island beginning Thursday afternoon and continuing through Friday morning. The Bermuda Weather Service has also issued a watch for the island. Now, they will still get some rain. They'll get flooding, rain, some storm surge, some high waves. Wind and wind gusts are the main threat, though, though those other threats are still present. Swells generated by Earl are expected to reach Bermuda by tonight and the U.S. East Coast shortly thereafter. The swells are likely to cause life threatening surfing currents mainly in Bermuda, not as much for the United States. So, don't worry, just be a little more cautious when swimming. Um, 
Uh, these will continue through the weekend. And if you're more concerned, please consult products from your local weather service. Um, if we go back to the outlet, we're going to go to K now. Uh, we're, we do see that Hurricane Watch, uh, well, first of all, we do see a huge wind field for tropical storm force and hurricane force wind field is still pretty big. 100 miles an hour moving north to northwest at 13 miles an hour, currently affecting parts of these tropical storm and hurricane uh, warning and hurricane watch areas. Hurricane warnings are in effect and they stop at California. This is the most north those are likely going to get because California is, is going to have a rain flooding threat. They're not going to get as much rain as you think, they're, but they're having a big flooding threat because they are in a big drought. Um, but there's no wind threat, and we will see that if we go to arrival time of winds, most likely. California's not in anything. Uh, some parts of the Baja California coast uh, are in the 90 to 100% chance. The Baja California coast will continue to get their tropical storm force winds until around Friday, 8 a.m. Inland as well, but earlier on Friday is when they will start to leave. But still inland and on the coast, Baja California Peninsula needs to watch out. Um, flash flooding potential, we have a moderate chance um, um, for parts of Southern California, a slight chance from San Diego all the way into um, out of California, and then we into Phoenix almost, but Phoenix is currently only in a marginal, but the slight is almost reaching there. The marginal also goes to Tuscan. U.S. rainfall potential, you see not that much rain, two to four inches. Now, that still can cause flooding, but usually that wouldn't for most places, but this is like in a big drop, so. Key messages. As Center of K passes just offshore, heavy rainfall could lead to flash flooding, including landslides across the Baja California Peninsula and portions of mainland northwestern Mexico through Saturday morning. Flash urban and small stream flooding is possible across Southern California, especially in and near the peninsula ranges in southwest Arizona, Friday night and Saturday. Hurricane conditions are expected along portions of the western Central uh, Baja California coast on Thursday and Thursday night, and hurricane warnings are in effect for that area. Tropical storm conditions are beginning over portions of Baja California Peninsula, and these conditions are expected to spread northward during the next day or so, where tropical storm warning is in effect. This system is expected to weaken from this point on and become post tropical in around four days. If uh, we look at spaghetti models for these systems. Well, first let's look at the model intensity guidance. Earl Mosho becoming to a high in Cat 3 and uh, low in Cat 4. Spaghetti models, of course, show it moving out to sea near Bermuda. Where Bermuda's main threat will be wind and wind gusts, but of course, there's still the threat of he heavy, high amounts of rainfall, flooding, coastal flooding, to um, storm surge and um, swells. Now, of course, flooding and coastal flooding are separate. But, yeah. Danielle will weaken from this point on, as we can see in this model intensity guidance. No model shows it continue to strengthen, and we could see near Portugal landfall around 120 hours out, but it will be practically dead by then, like not even remnants. And K is supposed to weaken from this point on, and it could make landfall in the Baja California Peninsula, but most don't. Show it and all show it going, most all show it going away from California and then doing a loop coming back around. If we look at the forecast models, we're going to look at the North South Atlantic for those two areas. Uh, we do see that the GFS shows the um, yellow area dying pretty quick and does not show anything as you can see here. Now that's and that 1007 is really far out. If we look at the ECMWF, we do see for that red area, keeps moving, but it's not show anything. It also does not show much for the yellow area. Um, that it does show something coming off the coast to 965, but we'll just have to see what happens with that. Now, whether you skip to this timestamp or watch the whole video, here is the United States portion. I would pull up the Climate Prediction Center and I tried multiple times, but its website is not working at all. It will not pull up multiple devices I've tried. Um, so if we look at the fire risk first, we have an extreme fire risk, um, a significant in the um, for uh, oh, parts of the Northwest, but. Um, 
Yeah, North Central Montana. Critical fire is going down into Southern Montana, as well as other parts of the Pacific Northwest, and a huge dry thunderstorm risk. So, wind gusts and uh, dry and low humidity will be causing these fires. So definitely watch out and critical tomorrow for parts of Nebraska and Idaho mainly. If we go to, sorry for that pause there. If we go to slight, we do see uh, two areas in the Pacific Northwest. Sorry for that pause there again. Uh, sorry, or something, but sorry about that. Um, so in the Pacific Northwest, we do see these two slight risks um, and a marginal risk in the South Central United States. No tornado risk. Significant wind threats in the Pacific Northwest and a 5% in the... Um, uh, parts of South Central, for, uh, mainly Texas and Louisiana for wind and hail. Only a wind threat for the Pacific Northwest regions, but definitely significant wind gusts are possible. So we have to watch out for that. Day two, a marginal risk for northern Wisconsin and northeast Minnesota. No tornado risk, 5% wind and 5% hail. And day three, just east storm. Weather Prediction Center, if we look at the excessive rainfall, we do see... Um, marginal risks for South Carolina up into Pennsylvania and parts of the Southeast Gulf Coast. Day two, we do see for South Carolina down to Jacksonville, a slight risk marginal from Louisiana, like New Orleans area down to Miami and up to around Myrtle Beach. Day three, we do see, of course, that uh, this from K. Then we do a marginal risk um, in near Montana, Pacific Northwest and the Dakotas. Montana and Dakotas, and a huge slight risk in mainly the Florida Panhandle, Georgia, and Alabama, into southeast, into southeast South Carolina. Marginal goes down to around Tampa, uh, uh, to um, south, uh, southwest Louisiana, and up to south central Kentucky, and up near Wilmington. And if we go back. Sorry guys, if you just noticed there's a little cut there. There was some uh, problem with uh, my device. But I covered already every single one for the excessive rainfall part. So now let's just go to looking at the um, overview. So, uh, we and also these I already covered with the um, um, Hurricane K area. Of course, we're seeing uh, widespread 4 to 6 inches um, parts of... Those will see 6 to 10 inches and some 10 to 15 inches. I've already covered that. Anyway, we are seeing um, areas of severe thunderstorm possible in the Pacific Northwest. Heavy rain, such flash flooding in the Northeast. Day two, that severe weather will pretty much be gone. And a near landfall on the Baja California Peninsula. The, a front will be moving through. And by day three, a flooding possible in uh, near California and huge area in the southeast. Um, seven day rainfall, we're seeing huge amounts of rainfall, especially in Florida, Panhandle Coast, and, uh, in, and um, uh, some heavy rainfall in uh, Southern California. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't, uh, please like and subscribe. If you want to watch a government video, the link will be in the description. I'll see you guys uh, next video. Goodbye, guys.